Welcome back guys, we're here at this lovely property of a repeat customer of ours. I'm on my own today, even though it's bank holiday, three days has worn Luke out. So um, let me show you what I'm going to do and um, let's get into it. So the first socket is going to come from the fuse board, up and along down this column and we're just going to be sticking a socket here next to this guy. The second lot are going to come out the side through and under this stairwell and into this room. We're going to come out around here somewhere. We're going to have a couple of sockets here for this charging station and then we've also got to come up along here and we're going to go out to the external side of the wall and we're going to run down to a whisker box and that's going to connect to our armoured through the duct into the greenhouse. Okay, I'm gonna take this cover off and follow boss man and see if it's neat or not. I mean, it's only got what looks like three circuits unless that one's tripped out. I can't imagine it being that messy. Oh, nice, nice old neat wiring. All right, so before I was just obviously sussing out in my head what I was gonna do. I said I might have took a conduit from this one behind me to the column and then one out the side through to next door but looking at it under the stairs, we're just gonna make it so, obviously if I do one piece of conduit in the top, if the board's ever changed, then it's less entry points into it. And obviously I can wire my singles just in my conduit and not have to go back through the board. So if we put a couple on there and a T piece, I've made a mark on the wall at the center where it's gonna go through to next door I've put my laser on that line, and if you look through, we'll just make it with a bit of tube under the stairwell, so we'll get away with just the one entry into the board. I'll go around and mount my sockets, and then I know that all I've got to do then is just install my tube to them sockets. Um, it's just nice to work towards something. Right, over at the column, I've made a little mark. That's the top of my workbench. So I think I'm gonna go on the third brick up just to allow a nice bit for the plug. And a good thing, always before you start mounting your box, you've got different knockouts around it. So check what way you wanna do it. So I've got two on this side, flip it around. I've got three on this side. I think I wanna take the one with three. I can either use the center one or the very end one. So we're gonna come up the edge of the column and we can just do our tube behind the uh, skull. We're going to get the T onto the coupler there. So cut just a little bit. That'll go into there, into the coupler. We'll cement that down with some solvent cement. With our marksman, we'll just mark on the wall, get that drilled up. But I was just going to say, I've not used this stuff in years and it takes me back to my very first ever sort of couple of years from leaving college. Not sitting around the corner sniffing it, but I've done a long job on Harlow Hospital. Me and a good mate of mine was just doing tube everywhere. And yeah, just the smell of that takes it back to, I mean, I guess you could take say it was my apprenticeship, but it wasn't, it was just work. But um, yeah, it makes me feel old. Speaking about my first job, uh, write in the comments below and let me know what yours was. Okay, so with the solvent cement, don't put too much on. Just a little bit around the inside. And when you push that on, you know that you're just gonna get a nice sort of connection. Both bits of plastic are gonna be bonded together. I've seen it so many times where people don't use it. And over the time, either the conduit will warp or someone will knock it. Just to prevent things like that, just only takes a few seconds, just a little bit of solvent cement and it's just gonna keep it all nice and solid and held together. All right, from the board, so we've got our first obstacle, which is this shelf. I'm not gonna start taking it apart because it's quite a big shelf and it's all bolted down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark my saddle from the T-junction, my saddle from the ceiling. I'm gonna measure in between and do one in the center if I can get it. Hopefully that's not banging the way. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold up my tube, mark 
where I want to go through. Go through with a wood bit and then I might jigsaw out the back just so it's a nice slot. Yeah, let's mark them up and then we'll get the hole drilled through the shelf. Uh, okay, yeah, the shelf's bang on in the middle. So what I might do is I'll just evenly do one either side of that then. So I'll do one about here, one about there, seeing as we can't get one in the center. So I want to do my first bend onto the ceiling. I've been given some pre-made bends, but I don't really like to use them if I don't have to. So what I've done, I've measured from the ceiling where the bend wants to be, down to the point it's going to connect. Uh, we've got 1700. So what we want to do is bend further than 1700. So when we hold it up, it's going past and then we can cut it down to size. Because if you try to do it bang on, you're going to waste loads of conduit, either bending it too short or, well, if it's long, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I like to get the measurement over bend the length and then cut it down to size. So we'll do that and then up the top we can just stick a through box and join our next piece onto it. Right, so we've marked out, I found where 1700 was, done it at 1900 so it'll overlap and I can cut it to the correct size. That's the pre-made one that you just push in either side. They get you out of trouble in places but personally I don't really like them. Um, I like to do it all in one piece if I can. So we've marked out and what you want to do, you want to find your shortest side and put the spring in from that side. This is a 20 mil bending spring. So we'll push it in from that side and a good thing to do, wrap some singles around the end so you can pull it back out. But what I like to do is hold that where I want the bend. I want to make sure that I'm not bending it just on the last bit, sort of try to get a nice bit of spring either side of where you want to get a bend. Hold that to the end. And then if we put a little kink into our singles. When we push it down the tube, as soon as it hits that kink, we know the spring's in place where we want our bend because if you try to bend it without the spring in the correct place, it will just kink and fold in on itself. So let's get that in there and get it bent. Okay, so we found our mark, the bending spring's in place. What you wanna do is just make sure the pipe isn't cold and brittle and gonna snap. What you can do with plastic pipe is you can slightly over bend it because when you pull the spring out, the plastic naturally wants to open back out to its original position. So if you over bend it, so I want a 90 degree bend here. So if I bend it just a bit more than 90 degrees, I can take it out and check it and I might need to bend it a little bit more. You'll find if you try to bend a 90 with the spring in, when you take it out, that I want to flex back out and it'll be a bigger degree than 90. So let's get this bent, offer it up to the wall, cut it down to size and get it fixed up. You can see we've got our 90 degree bend in place and you can see that it overextends past the T-junction. So we'll mark on there now where we want to cut it down to and we can get that cemented in, put our clips around it and then we can reset our laser to go along the ceiling. And from there we can stick a through box up here and just carry on with the run. Make sure that it's pushed up and the bend is where it needs to be because you don't want it to let, let it slip and then make your mark and be short. So push that up to where it wants to be. You can see we want it about there. We can always make a slight adjustment. So make our mark and we'll go get our pipe cutters and cut that down. So what you'll find, if you cut conduit with a hacksaw, you'll get all the burr around the edge and you'll have to deburr it. But if you get a set of just pipe cutters, it will leave a nice clean cut. I actually got these ones from my granddad. As you can see, they've lasted quite a few years, but it just goes to show there's no need to buy brand new tools and spend hundreds of pounds. These are years old, probably cost about a fiver, but they do the job. So we'll go to our mark, you can see it there. 
get the blade onto the mark and you just ratchet it and you've got a nice clean cut there, no burrs, good uh, tool to keep in the van. So what I've done is the tube's up on the ceiling ready, laser's set up to that, we can see where it's coming down the column, so I'm going to mount this in place where I want it. I'm just going to repeat the process, mark out my saddles, get all them fixed up, do a 90 degree bend on this side, we'll go from the through box and we'll just work our way down to the socket. So I'll just crack on with that and uh, let the B roll. I was just saying, this is the sort of work I like. It takes me back to sort of doing commercial work. You know your area, you just got your tools set out, you're cracking on. Be good to see what all your guys' favorite sort of work is to do. Let me know in the comments, but I definitely prefer sort of commercial, industrial. Houses are good, but there's a lot involved and I always find people that say houses are easy or house bashers, don't know what they're doing like until you do it like definitely hats off to them and give them a bit of respect because some of the graft of trying to pull through floors and ceilings um it's a lot more involved than i mean don't get me wrong commercial you've got a lot of big works to do um i've i've done it all myself but um it's not always straightforward with houses so it's nice to jump to something back like this Put it. Oh, it broke my ankle. What are you going to call it? Luke. First bit's done and over to the column. So I've set the laser up off the T piece and I'm just going to get this bit done under the stairs, pop through to next door, and then I'll concentrate in this room. It's pretty much just same thing just get your laser line mark out your saddles cut your conduit size get that on and just move on to the next area so i'm just going to crack on when i'm in the next room i'll show you something that's interesting in there maybe i'll do that up to a t there along to a 90 down to them two sockets up, bend it onto the ceiling, and then I can just set it down below that cable. Or do I keep this low? T just up above the shelf. So fix that. Okay. <laughs> One thing. <laughs> right. One thing I didn't take into account is that slope. So if you look, you'll see where it's come out. Right, good job we have some grey filler on the van. Okay, we want to go 70 mil higher. Take two. Oh, Jordan, eat your heart out. <laughs> what I've done, where I've drilled through, I've drilled a hole bigger than 20 mil so this will slide through and then because it's in the corner I've drilled a hole far to the left hand side of this stop end box put a brush coupler there and I, what I've done is I push a tube through first and connected it to the other side and I just put a pencil mark literally flush with the wall pulled it back out and then I've held the stop end box where the line flush with the wall was and I've taking it back down to where the length of the tube needs to be, cut it down, I've cemented that together. So when I push that through, that's gonna sit flush to the wall. That's gonna join up with my stop end box on the other side. And then we know the cables are protected through the wall as well. They come straight through into the box and it's all one piece then. OK, 
Okay, so now I know that that's flush to the wall. The conduit's protecting the cables where they go through the wall because I'm going to be using singles. And then from here, we can just come up. We'll put a T-piece, come along to two sockets there on that little workbench. And then we can carry on up over this room and drill through outside, ready to go to the greenhouse. Just gonna do a small pilot hole through so I can see where I wanna run the tube from. All right, so what I've done on this bit, I've had to do a 90 degree but then if it was straight it'd be coming here i've had to put a kink in it because where i've got this t-junction it's not flat against that wall so when it goes up through the shelf it's not going to sit flush against that wall so with the kink that will be straight and it'll just kick out back to that line that's a good thing about a bending spring and plastic conduit you can manipulate it to where you need it to be Right, so what I'm doing is I'm just prepping the whisker box for outside. I want to bring the tube all the way through the cavity into the actual whisker box. I've drilled my 20mm hole but they're quite thick at the back on the base. If you use a standard plastic brush and coupler it doesn't, the thread doesn't come through so you can't screw it on. So what I've done, luckily on the van I've got some of these longer thread ones for metal conduit. Push that through and you can see you've got plenty of thread. So now that can screw on. The conduit will come through the wall. That'll be flush against the wall. That'll be through the cavity. Singles will be protected. And on the other side, they'll be coming into the box nicely ready for the armoured to be connected up to. All right, so that's all the containment done. I'm just gonna put away some tools that I don't need, just keep a nice clean work area. Once that's ready, I'm gonna set up the cable jacks and start pulling in some singles just through to the sockets. I might get up to the whisker box and then at least the inside's pretty much wired. I can put the sockets on and then it's just a case of taking the lid off the whisker box and running the armoured through the duct to the greenhouse. I'm just gonna repair um, a couple of the small pilot holes that I made earlier. This pseudo, uh, Repair Express is really good. This is the grey one, seeing as I've drilled through breeze block here, that'll just blend in. They do a really good beige one that's good for mortar lines outside. I haven't found a red brick one yet, but if they do one, let me know because I could do with a tube of that on the van. I'm also going to just give the conduit a quick wipe through with big wipes just to give it a nice shine. Anyone wondering why I'm using singles, if you're not an electrician or you do DIY. It doesn't need the outer sheath, which is you'll get on like twin and earth cables and flexes and things because the conduit's actually protecting the cable. So yeah, we run singles through. You do see people run twin and earth through like small links, but if you've ever worked with it, you'll see it's so difficult to get around bends and stuff with a couple of twin and earths. And also it will soon take up the capacity because they're a lot thicker. It's just a lot easier to work with. Doesn't need the extra protection. So yeah, hopefully that's cleared up something for you. So when I'm taping singles together, it's just common sense, but um, I always just tape them with a little bit of a stagger, just so it pulls through nice. If you've got them all bunched, it's a thicker end that couldn't get caught up on things. So give them a little stagger and then it should pull through nice. This is my draw wire, so that will push through the conduit first. It should push through nice. It's got a nice sort of metal end on it. When I get the other end, I'll take my cables and then I can just pull it through. A lot of people would have seen this already, but for any newcomers that haven't, if you cut a little bit of Copex, you can just store it on there as it doesn't come, it just comes in a reel and it can knot up. And then if you pull them all together, you can take off what you need, push them all together, and it will store nicely in your van. If it's long enough. So this is why we put these little inspection boxes because it just breaks up the point of where you're wiring from, makes it easier 
rather than one long piece that is going to get snagged up you can go to one of these boxes and it just makes it a lot easier to wire should nearly be there so because it's a radial i'm going to go from the board through to this point from this point back to my t-junction and through to the next socket but i don't want to pull these ones through then have to get the draw wire back through and pull another set from this socket back so what i'm going to do i'm going to measure off what i need cut a length then when i feed these ones from the drum i can tape the other length for the board with these pull them all together i can drop one set off at the board and the next set that's connected to the drum steel i can run through to my next socket so it might sound a bit confusing but i'll show you and you might sort of get what i'm doing When I'm taping onto the draw wire, I take the front end on, but I always make sure to tape this back end as well. Anyone that's pulled through conduit before will know that if you've pulled through and it snags up and you want to pull it back, if you've not taped that bit, it's going to fold back on itself and start getting caught. So if you tape that back up, you can pull it both ways if you need to. Man's, man's in today and done 90% of the work so boy will be back in on Monday and we'll get him to do the other 10% but gonna call it a day it is Friday after all go have a beer and then all we got to do is put it in the breaker armoured through to the greenhouse and a couple of sockets in there all right welcome back it's Monday morning Luke's coming with me today and we're just going to finish off getting the sockets out to the greenhouse. The end of the radial currently is in the whisker box. So what we're going to do today is an armoured down from the whisker box. It's going to go through the duct in, under the slabbed floor, and it's going to come up to the corner of the greenhouse. We're going to put an IP rated socket so we can use it for lawnmower and things. And then we're going to pop into the greenhouse and do some conduit round just to another socket inside for, I think, like a heater and things. So let's get the armoured through the duct and see how that goes. I'm going to tie this armoured on, but rather than just taping the rope straight, and if you pull and the tape comes loose, that is just going to come off. So what I like to do, just make a little loop feed that onto the armoured and when you pull it tight it kind of tightens itself up so you can tape over that and it's just going to help tighten when you pull the rope and pull it through so i like to do that a couple of times so i'll do another one so you can see that's pulled down i'm going to tape over that a couple of times as well so the more pressure i put on that rope the more tight it pulls around the cable and that's going to help it pull through that's your gloves mate don't get supplied any called J-Dog and getting to order some. Is that a tight bend? Yeah. Right, pull it back to you. Right, now push it down one, wait one, two, three. That's it, that's it got it. I, I reckon undo the ropes. It's probably worth leaving the rope in for future. Oh yeah. All you need to do is just pull it long enough to go up to the whisker. It's yeah. Maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Cool. I'm just seeing roughly where, where to Maybe. the hole of the through box. Maybe do that one a bit lower. Yeah. Because it's only for lawnmowers and stuff. Maybe do it so you're yeah, drilling somewhere there. through like the yeah, corner. Yeah, corner cross section. 450's there, so I'll do on that one. cats they just do nothing they eat they poo in your house in the train and walk off and then bring dead birds and um, yeah if you like say oh come here they look at you like you're an idiot so i've done the bend so once the saddle was uh mm -hmm. the d-line yeah, are up we could just cut that down put the box bit up to the socket yeah and then 
cut that bit into Hopefully it. we've got a through coupler. If not, we'll stick a... Yeah, there is a through I might, Oh no, actually it might be worth doing a through box. There's a through coupler in there. Is there? Oh, maybe do a through coupler. What? Where's my screwdriver? Client, send me a new screwdriver. Oh, that's gone down to Swanee. See on the latest video, John and uh, Ruben were speaking about their worst electric shocks. Luckily, I don't think I've had any that come to mind that were terrible. More just little things from stupidity, like especially old fuse boards. Uh, I find the really old Crabtree C50 boards, um, just where everything's exposed. Like you take the cover off and you've got buzz bar on show, like everything like if you've not isolated it properly it's um really easy to touch something in a real world it's not ideal to always turn the whole board off if you're working in like an office or something obviously you should go through a proper procedure and be able to isolate but everyone knows that's not always the case so if i'm working near a fuse board i always like to put my gloves on now just um a bit extra protection but luckily i can turn this one off i'll go, I'll go ask luke and see what if he's had anything What's your worst electric shock? Was it what I've had one with you? Never. <laughs> yeah, <myself. laughs> Never. That's the only time I've had one. <laughs> um, trying to think, I've had one while talking to a customer. It was here, the fan was wired up dodgy, something else. I assumed the circuit was off, and as I was talking to the customer, I was holding it like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you all right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, go good. He's, he didn't realise. Yeah, we're just going to finish off the greenhouse now, so we're getting a conduit round to where the IP rated socket's on the outside. Luke's drilled through, put a bit of conduit through the wall, and we're going to do the inside of this bit in singles. So he's just under there putting the saddles on, and we're going to stick the socket just up here, and then we can push all this shelving back with the um, melons on. And uh, yeah, we can get into some testing, and I'll show you that. So we thought it'd be fun just to calculate the R1, R2 and then do the reading and see how close we can get to it. So if you look in on-site guide, page 218, you've got your milliamps per meter readings for your cross-sectional cross -sectional area of cable. So to find our R1 plus R2, what we want to do is our milliohms per meter times the length of the cable divide by a thousand to take it back to ohms from milliamp. So we've got a 2.5 line conductor and a 2.5 CPC conductor because it's in singles. So that gives us 14.82 milliohms per meter. So 14.82, when I times that by the length, I've roughly walked it out. It seems to be about 35 meters. And then we'll divide that by a thousand. 14.82, times 35, divide by 1000, 0 0.51. The only thing that might throw it off is if I've not calculated the length correctly, and also our armoured is earthed on the armouring, so that's gonna take the earth cross-sectional area up a bit. But we'll look around for about a 0 0.51 reading and see what we get. Okay, so our cable's back at the board. It's second fixed into all the sockets. So the first thing we want to do is our insulation resistance. So I've got that on 500 volts. And we're going to go between all of the conductors. So line to CPC, 999. Line to neutral. That's not good. So this is why we do testing, just to make sure one of the conductors might have been put in the wrong terminal by accident, so we'll go have a look and see if we can find it. My burst neutral lines, they're fine. If you That's want to disconnect your side, I'll test just the armour. That's all good. It's not as faulty so You didn't put them two together, did you? No, no. Even for that, I've just pulled them apart, separated them. Give it a little wiggle about with the cables, isn't it? 
and wiggle it about near the, where you've made the armoured off. See, the left side's on, but not the right side. Oh. Press that again. The left light's on, but not the right side. Yep. That's gone up to 0.23. I can see socket. Oh, see, look how only one side's on. Yeah, I reckon it is that. Basically, it turns out that this IP rated socket is faulty from manufacturer because one side doesn't seem to be working properly. It's obviously got a fault internally. So what we've done, we've taken it off, just waygoed it through so we can retest it and make sure our cable's clear. And if it is, what we'll do is just swap out this internal socket. Uh, you can keep the surrounding and just unscrew these four screws, put a new socket on the back and you can still use it then. So let's just double check our cables okay. Yeah, cable's all good, so it was a faulty manufactured socket. That's why we always test before we liven up, just to make sure everything's safe. But what we're gonna do now is our R1, R2. So I'm gonna connect line and CPC and away you go. We're gonna to go to the last socket on the radial, test from there, and fingers crossed we get around the reading that we calculated earlier. Moment of truth. All right, it was a little bit higher than what I said, but not too far off. 0.10 higher, so I might have got a meterage a bit wrong, but I'm happy with that. So we can put that back in, and then we can liven it up and get our ZS reading. It's probably about 41, 42 meters by the time it goes all through the tube and through to the greenhouse, but um, yeah, it's just good to do the calculations and see what you're working with, really. So we've done our insulation resistance, we've done our R1, R2, and then I've just gone round all the sockets after livening them up, and I've got the earth loop impedance reading from every socket, turn the switch on and off for polarity, make sure they're switching correctly. And at the last socket where you'd expect it, the highest reading was 1.08 ohms. So if you look in the on-site guide at the max disconnection times for a 60898 breaker, it's a type B and it's 20 amps. So the max we're allowed is 1.75, so it's well in that. So we're happy that our circuits met all the readings it needs to and I'll just fill it into the iPad so we can give them a certificate and that's the radio done. We've basically put a new circuit in from the garage fuse board, put some containment up and over to a socket here for this bench. So that's all in. Come back over under the stairs and if you follow through into this room, we've come through the wall up to this shelf here where there's gonna be batteries and sort of chargers and things, you've got a compressor. Then back up, over through to outside, through the wall to the whisker box. Then we've changed from singles to armoured, come down under a duct, and then on the other side of the duct, we've come up to an IP rated socket, back through into the greenhouse, put tube through the greenhouse to our last socket at the end there. I swear there's about three times more bees in there now. So we've got the testing on our circuit. All we need now is to go get the ZD and PFC at the main incomer, see what the earthing system is, fill out the last few details on the cert, and that'll be job complete. Thanks for watching another episode, guys. Next time, we'll be back to do the battery storage, so stay tuned for that. And if you stick around, there'll be some links for some other videos. See you next time. Right, so we've got our first obstacle. Start that again. All right, that's it for today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, that's the job completed. So hopefully I've shown you some interesting things that you. <laughs> what? The thing is, every <laughs> video is it's just the same. That's isn't it? Job done.